Okay, so to start off, did everyone get a chance to read these two documents last night or yesterday? Okay, awesome. So we're going to go ahead and just talk about some of the main arguments of um, these two people surrounding the topic of World War One. So to start off with um, Robert M. LaFollette, it has no popular support. What kinds of arguments was LaFollette making in this argument? He didn't want to do war. He didn't want war. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of names on so I can think about what he also said. Um, what kind of evidence was he using to support his argument? So what kind of arguments <coughs> did this editor was using to construct 
his ideas about um, war being a blessing and not a curse, because that's quite a claim. You're asking what kind of evidence he, someone would use? Yeah, so or what tone more. was he using? Where was he coming from in making this argument? He's saying it was like humanistic almost to like want to fight. Yeah. Um, I just don't know which. Yeah, yeah, no. Really definitely. He was coming from a place of. Something like Bruce McFarland and Mary. Yeah, it, exactly. He's drawing a lot of essentialist distinctions between who Americans are and who the enemy is. And um, within that, he also makes a lot of claims within certain um, ideologies. Did any of you guys catch that? Well, he makes a lot of um, <coughs> religious arguments. We Christians, they you know, are persecuting us or our fellow Christians in other countries. And then um, he had a really major tone of patriotism, too. Did any of you guys catch that, or could you see any evidence of that? Yeah. So, yeah, he had a lot of, so. That was from the North American Review. And he was making some essentialist or human-based, like when it said, humanity based arguments, and then some religious arguments. And in terms of the overall tone, did you guys catch what you thought maybe the overall tone was if it was talking about America the protector, America the hero? Did you guys catch any of that? Sort of stepping forward that America has this obligation to other countries? Because there was, like I said, there was a major tone of patriotism. So, do you guys think that that would go along with America being? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that was a major um, <coughs> debate, even within this debate, was what is America's place in the world? Do we only have obligations to ourselves, or do we have obligations to establish some sort of security in the world altogether? So just um, to reiterate uh, sort of what the purpose of looking at these articles was, is this is one of the major political debates of history, and we sort of wanted to take a look at what sort of arguments were they using to construct their rebuttal for what was sort of the growing trend at this time. And so we're going to take a look at a video, and this is just a kind of reiterate some of these ideas, some of the emphasis on evidence, on themes, in terms of how to construct a debate. So this is going to be real quick, just about five minutes. Hey, good evening. I'm going to do a presentation on uh, A few disclaimers before we get started. Um, first of all, he's Canadian. That's going to explain his silly accent and <laughs> why he's referring to Canadian law or Canadian systems. Um, also, he talks a lot about reflection time and how reflection time is important to construct your argument for a debate. Theoretically, this class would have reflection time. That would be sort of what we were talking about up to this point. And he talks a lot about themes.